Most people think the motorcycle was born in a garage with chrome, noise and fire. But the truth is it started with wood. In 1885, in a small German workshop, two men built something the world had never seen before. It had no rubber tires, no gears, no brakes. It looked more like a wooden horse than a machine, but it moved on its own. That strange little vehicle, called the Wright Wagon, would become the world's first motorcycle. Its inventors were not racers or rebels. They were engineers, dreamers, men who wanted to bring motion to the everyday man. Their invention wasn't glamorous, it wasn't comfortable, it wasn't even safe, but it worked, and it worked in a time when no one believed it could. That first ride, just a few shaky meters on wooden wheels, became a turning point in human mobility. From that moment on, the world would never sit still again. So the next time you hear an engine roar, remember the sound began with a whisper on wooden wheels in a German barn 140 years ago. And today, we're diving into the fascinating story of the very first motorcycle ever invented by mankind, a wooden two-wheeler that changed the way we move forever. Imagine a time before engines, before highways, before speed. The year is 1880, horses are still the kings of the road. If you wanted to travel, you needed time, a lot of it. Carriages were slow and bumpy, roads were made of dirt or cobblestone. A trip that takes 30 minutes today could take an entire day back then. And if it rained, mud .com or if it snowed, you're stuck. People dreamed of moving faster, but the technology wasn't there yet. Steam engines had arrived, but they were massive, expensive, and fixed to tracks. Bicycles were just beginning to appear, but they relied on human strength. Take the story of Franz, a postman in a German village in 1882. Every morning, he would load a leather satchel full of letters onto his back. Then, he would walk for hours through mud, rain, or snow, just to deliver messages. Sometimes, he dreamed of a machine, something small, personal, and fast. But back then, that was science fiction. The world didn't just need speed, it needed something smaller, lighter, and practical. A machine that one person could ride. Not a train, not a carriage, something new. This was the silent need building up across Europe, and two men in Germany would soon answer that call. In the quiet town of Cannstatt, Germany, two men were working on something the world wasn't ready for. Their names were Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach. Daimler was a visionary engineer, Maybach, a mechanical genius. Together, they had a dream to create the smallest, most efficient internal combustion engine ever built. They called it the grandfather clock engine, tiny, vertical and precise. At first, they used it on a boat, then on a carriage. But Daimler wanted more, he wanted a personal machine just for one rider. In 1885, they took a bold step, they mounted their engine onto a wooden bicycle frame. It had two large wooden wheels and two small side wheels like training wheels. The fuel tank sat under the seat, the engine was exposed, roaring with every breath. They named it the right wagon, the riding car. The first test was risky, the wooden wheels could catch fire, the engine was unstable. But they tried anyway, Wilhelm Maybach's teenage son, Paul, became the first rider in history. He straddled the right wagon, kicked it to life, and began moving slowly, shakily, but surely. People watched in disbelief, a machine onto wheels, with no horse. It was loud, it was strange, but it worked. That first ride didn't last long, but it was enough enough to prove that individual powered travel was possible. Daimler and Maybach had done it. They didn't just build a machine, they created a movement. August 29, 1885, a quiet street in Cannstatt, Germany. August 29, 1885, a quiet street in Cannstatt, Germany. A teenage boy named Paul Maybach climbs onto a wooden machine with two wheels. No helmet, no instructions, just courage. He pulls the lever, the engine rumbles to life. The right wagon begins to move slowly, unevenly, but steadily. Neighbors peek out from windows, confused and amazed. A machine, moving by itself, with no horse. Paul keeps riding, balancing the strange machine as it vibrates beneath him. 12 kilometers per hour. It wasn't fast, but it was freedom. 12 kilometers per hour. The test ride doesn't last long, maybe 10 minutes but it's enough to change everything. Daimler and Maybach prove their idea works. The right wagon becomes the first successful motorcycle. 
From that moment on, the dream of personal motorized travel was no longer a fantasy. It was real, it was here, and it had just taken its first ride. The first motorcycle was never about speed, it wasn't about style or power either. It was about vision and courage. Two men dared to challenge the limits of their time. They didn't wait for better roads or better tools. They started with what they had, wood, fire, and a dream. The right wagon wasn't perfect, it shook, it smoked, it almost burned. But it moved, and that changed everything. It proved that motion could belong to the individual, not just the rich or the railroads. That one shaky ride paved the way for millions of motorcycles to come. And it all began with two men and an idea that refused to sit still. Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach never set out to build a legend. They wanted to solve a problem, they saw the world stuck in slow motion, and they dreamed of change. They didn't have a factory, they didn't have investors. All they had was a workbench, a fire in their hearts, and an engine in their minds. Today, their names are remembered not just in textbooks, but in every engine that starts with a roar. The right wagon sits in museums now old, wooden, fragile. But its spirit rides on on highways, in races, and in the hearts of riders around the world. Every motorcycle today carries a piece of that first idea, the belief that motion belongs to everyone. And in honoring the makers, we honor what makes us human, our need to move, to explore, to never stand still. What if Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach never built the right wagon in 1885? What if no one dared to put an engine onto wheels? Would we still be riding bicycles to work? Would motorcycles exist at all or arrive decades later? Would the scooter, the superbike, the chopper ever be born? And more importantly, what dreams would we have missed? Every invention is a ripple. One bold idea leads to a thousand others. That one wooden machine paved the way for every motorcycle brand we know today, from Holly to Yamaha. No cross-country road trips, no roaring engines on mountain roads. No biker clubs, no freedom rides. That's what the first motorcycle gave us, not just motion, but meaning. And more than a century later, we still chase that same feeling. The wind, the road, and the ride that never ends. And if you think the first motorcycle was impressive, wait until you see the world's first gasoline-powered car, built not for speed, but for a future no one saw coming. In our next episode, we explore how Germany changed the world with a three-wheeled machine that started it all. Don't miss it, the first car in history, a drive that started everything. Thanks for riding through history with us if you enjoyed learning about the world's first motorcycle and the minds who made it possible. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We've got more stories of first ever inventions that changed the world, from the first telephone to the first computer and beyond. This is where history gets personal. See you in the next ride.